Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gorilla Blood Radio. My name is Daniel Korea, and I am here with our advocating Jew, Scott NDX from New York City. What's up, Scott? This is going to be the pissed off fat guy edition of the show. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm all for that. So, uh, man, WWE this week had a really good moment followed by a really crappy moment followed by... Oh, that sounds like the pay-per-view. Yeah, that was the pay-per-view for somewhat, but I'm also describing Monday Night Raw in a nutshell, too. Uh, uh, the, the the pay-per-view was, yeah, whatever. Um, we I think we concisely gave it, like, a, a D. I think that was the, the overall score average. Between. No, I think y'all gave it D-pluses because you didn't want to be as angry as me. That's true. I mean, I if, gave it a D. I should have gave it a fucking F, but, you know, we did get a match of the year candidate. Yeah, which was the uh, the Ziggler and oh uh, Owens match. So you notice the only two matches of your candidates have come from that fat fuck. <laughs> At least from WWE, yes. Yes. From and the funniest part is another match of the year candidate are are two guys that are now currently on, you know, on the roster in WWE in a different company. Yeah. AJ and Nakamura. So. Uh, yeah, so that at fight officially signed on Monday or yeah, Sunday. Yeah, and oh man, the memes went crazy saying, "Hey, they finally re-signed Yoshitatsu," and I'm like, "Are you kidding me, assholes?" <laughs> Welcome to the internet. Yeah. Fuck you too. Yeah, that that pissed me off. Um, and it was funny. Um, I happened to see one of my alumni kids on my my badminton team. He has his his haircut is exactly like Nakamura's. And I showed him last year the picture of Nakamura, and I and I had him like try to do the pose and crap, and he was just laughing his ass off. And I told him, "Hey, the guy that I had you pose lo- like the other last year, he got signed by WWE." And he goes, "Holy shit! <laughs> he, he knows nothing about wrestling, but all of a sudden he's like, cool. The guy that the coach thinks I look like just got signed to WWE. Awesome. <laughs> so kind of random shit, but oh well. But uh, no, Monday Night Raw. Holy jeez." Started off with the bang. The ratings actually got boosted because of it, and then plummeted because. Well, after here comes the money. Yeah. Here comes the funny because the match that they booked at the opening of the show. Fuck you. For WrestleMania, guys, this is for WrestleMania. Shane O'Mac gets back. That was the great part. And as soon as I saw him come out in a suit and I saw him wearing tennis shoes, I knew he was going to be doing his little dancing jig thing that he normally does, which always makes me laugh. But it's one of those things where we hear about this stupid lockbox and Vince McMahon having something – or Shane having something of Vince's in there that he's holding over his head. And Vince basically is like, hey, I'll make you a match and you one more match and – if you if you win you or you can take over Raw or whatever. The, the, I mean, it's like he's basically trying to blackmail Vince, and Vince is trying to say, "Hey, trying to cover my ass." And uh, he makes a match uh, at WrestleMania for Shane, and if he wins, he gets control of Raw. But he's got to face the freaking Undertaker. Really? In a hell of a cell. On top of that, yes. Are you excited for WrestleMania now? I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? I'm not even home yet. Oh, man. I was on the bus when he called me. Yeah. Then he told me that. I'm like, you made that shit up. <laughs> it he does. Told me Shane McMahon returned today. And, and he's going to be in a match against The Undertaker. Out of hell in a cell. Yeah. No. It doesn't make sense. What? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't make sense. It's like there are two things. One, this is a stupid fucking match. Two, folks, I hate Undertaker matches at WrestleMania since 24. Why the fuck would I be interested now? I feel you, man. I feel you on that. That that it just didn't make any sense. It was really like a what the fuck moment. It just. Had no no bearing on anything really. They're just doing this manufactured last minute sounding storyline to get Shane on TV and get people interested. And the ratings spiked and then plummeted because the first hour, like, and I said something to Boobs after uh, 
watching the uh, watching it, saying, "Yeah, I bet you that the the second and third hours did worse." And sure enough, they did. And uh, fake blood and all. Oh God. So. Did Roman Reigns' face open? I, I, I honestly, I did too until I was unfortunate to see the footage of Byron Saxton handing him the freaking blood packet. I was like, uh, I hate when I. I, I want to be pissed off at it, but I can't be because it was so well done. I mean, it had me at first. Like, I was like, oh, this is good. And now they're actually, they're, they're kayfabing the whole story and saying Roman had to have surgery on a broken nose. Oh yeah, they showed the picture on uh, Instagram. Yeah, so. Came out with the quote unquote rabbit, uh, the, the the raccoon eyes. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it won't be like Steamboat uh, getting DDT'd on the floor, <laughs> but <laughs> it's still they're gonna have him probably show up with a mask on uh, SmackDown or Raw the rest of the week. So, but who knows, man? But yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna knock it. It was a good segment, but it still just. The fake blood thing was a little too much. Because, it I mean, that was all over the place. Yeah, but I've seen people with broken noses before that have had their faces exposed. True, true. But... Adam Cole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, okay. Man. So, yeah, w I mean, we'll see how the storyline goes. I mean, it definitely is a way to get people interested in, in, like, this blood feud now. Now it's officially a blood feud between Triple H and Roman Reigns. Um... Which, where Triple H is the face. Kind of. <laughs> well, according to the crowd last Yeah, night, <laughs> according to the crowd, yes. According to storyline purposes, no. Well, you gotta listen to the storyline or the crowd. <laughs> well, the crowd's gonna do whatever the hell they want, no matter what it is. So, basically, you gotta have to listen to the crowd. But, I mean, with what they're if doing... They listen to the crowd, it'd be Dean Ambrose or just Triple H. Exactly. Well, and especially with what they're doing with Shane... Uh, and and Vince and Stephanie to have Triple H all of a sudden be the baby face when Shane and uh, when uh, excuse me Stephanie and and Vince are the uh, are the heels it's a little weird how that worked out um, or how it is working out currently because the 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 speculation now again and I don't think it's gonna happen and I know as soon as I I, I posted uh, um, I sent a thing to you via text about the uh, the online speculation from a couple of Facebook groups I'm a part of. And one fan said, I think what Shane has in the lockbox is the old contract to WCW that says Shane McMahon on the contract, not Vince McMahon. Um, because they made it, I mean, that was one of the things that they made known, that it was Shane's name on the WCW contract when they simulcasted from, uh, from Orlando when they did that. So... Could it possibly be a way to set up Sting versus Taker and have Sting be the replacement for Shane in that match? Oh God, I just vomited a little. Yeah, I, and that was that was his basically reaction was no, and then he texted me back again and said fuck no. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I just I don't see why that they thought this would be a good idea with Shane and Taker. Idiots. I don't know. I mean, and you know what? It's funny because of all this stuff coming out now, um, going back and thinking about things and reading up on, on some of the, again, more speculation, but uh, from the past about how basically it looked like it was going to be Shane's company to run. Really, it did. And for a while there, it looked like Shane was going to be the one to take over. But Stephanie had a, mind, a better mind for creative. Shane had a better mind for business, right? And, I mean, in theory, in, in from what we saw. I mean, Shane took a lot more bumps and did his own thing uh, occasionally and uh, getting knocked off the Tron and all that kind of garbage. Um, or, Shane was a train wreck. Yeah, well, shoot, you remember, what was that, King of the Ring when he faced Angle and got suplexed through the... Well, the first one didn't didn't work, and he got suplexed into the, the, uh, the Tron staging, and it didn't... Every fucking time it didn't work. <laughs> they had to throw him to the glass twice each time. Yeah, and he landed on his head a couple of times, and he still kept going. So, I mean, kudos to Shane for taking an ass whooping and, and keeping going. But uh, 
I just, I don't get it. I mean, Shane is, how old is Shane now? He's got to be pushing 50. He's in his 40s. Yeah, he's got to be pushing 50. I mean, Taker is, I mean, is up there in age. He's in his 50s. Shane uh, Mac is 46. Okay, and, and, I mean, Shane hasn't wrestled a match, theoretically, in 10 years. I mean, oh. he, he looks, I mean, honestly, he looks worse than Vince. It was Vince at least colors his hair. Exactly. Hair that said, "I'm old, fuck you." Yeah. I just I don't know. It was just one of those situations where I was like, "What the hell, man?" But uh, I don't know, dude. Like it just it's the the backstage noise from in the past now is like coming back up about how Shane didn't have the booking sense, but Stephanie did. And then when Stephanie married Trips that kind of became what the future was going to be going to them. And that's why Shane got out. That's why Shane sold his stock and, and started investing. He tried to invest in, a, um, I think he invested in Elite XC, that other MMA company that got bought out by Bellator, I think, eventually. Um, and then he, now I guess he's working with some some multinational company that based out of New York that works does stuff with China. And that's another thing why I think that they're saying they might bring him on board to do more stuff because he can work out of New York. With They do have a WWE uh, headquarters in New York as well, aside from Stanford, and they do have the WWE studios in Los Angeles. So I, I just – I keep hearing these things, and I'm, I think that there's – I mean there's something to the storyline about the realism from the backstage stuff. But they have to have gotten over the stuff in order to bring it all out on television. You would think. I mean, this this isn't. I mean, this isn't Edge and Matt Hardy and Lita. All the while, they still hate each other's fucking guts. <laughs> yeah, but I, I look. I don't mind the idea of an edgier product coming back. Yes, I don't either. Um, I don't think it's necessary. But if it does, it does. You know, I mean, you don't have to be edgy to have good storylines. You just have to have good storylines. Yeah, that's true. That's the product. That's the problem with the product right now. The shitty storyline. You don't need cussing and you know dick swinging to make a storyline edgy. Yeah, did you see the to make it good. McMahon dropping the f bomb on TV? No, I didn't see that because again, I didn't watch the segment. I skipped through most of it okay. online when I watched it a little later. Okay. But you know, I probably missed the f bomb. <laughs> Um, they they bleeped it out, but still, I mean, like afterwards, again, more internet clips and people with their cell phones, and you hear them just going, "You're you're trying to step up and be uh be ballsy, you little motherfucker, or what that? Yeah, something like that." Yeah, I still don't care. Yeah, so, but again, that doesn't make a storyline edgy. No matter how fucking vulgar I am, I don't need it in my wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, this guy don't care one way or the other. As long as the storylines are good. That has been a problem lately. Like, it has. Really, the only thing that's worth watching in the WWE right now is friggin' Kevin Owens. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, right now we got a, a jacked up storyline with the Wyatts, uh, and the now they, they were calling them the Titans. Well, all of a sudden Ryback is pulling a big show and then turning heel. No, no shit's given. Yeah, I mean, we got he that. He didn't even turn heel. He's He's just being. I'm gonna think about myself from now on. Yeah, he's just being a dick. Oh, you guys are pretty cool, but I'm not wrestling with you anymore. He didn't even like, you know what? Fuck the big show. He's fat. Fuck Kane. He's old. That's not even his real hair. <laughs> no, it's just like. Eh, I just feel like doing my own. See, thing. that's why I think you gotta be a writer, dude. Like, seriously. That just made me, made me chuckle because. I would love to see Ryback do that. I think that would be perfect for his character. It would be perfect for his character, but it won't happen. That's sad. You know, you got the pandas and the little children. We can't hurt people. You realize how fucked up of a society this is? At the school that I work at, you know what the S word is? Sucks. Stupid. Oh, gosh. We are growing a generation of pussies. Yep, I, I fully agree. The S word is stupid. And the kids go nuts when someone says it. Oh, gosh. Like, someone just lit a fart on fire. Okay? Someone actually just pissed on the corpse. 
office of Jesus Christ. That's how bad a word stupid is. That's insane. Like, I can, I mean, I can remember how, I mean, using, like, saying retard. You're stupid. No, you're stupid. Don't be a moron. Fuck you. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that escalated quickly. <laughs> uh, he said the F word. <laughs> now that's a Exactly. Yeah, that makes, that makes total more sense. I mean, than, than stupid. I mean, that's just, I mean, I, I, I mean. Look at Ryback's catchphrase for a while. Yeah. Uh, stupid. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I can see. Oh I, I, I can, wonder if one of these kids, like, just falls into a fetal position and they see someone walking down the street with an what stupid shirt on. Jeez. Oh, my God. You should have seen stupid. You should have seen stupid. Well, shoot, those same kids, those same kids better not go on the network and uh, and watch some old John Cena stuff that that has uh, uh, Ruck Fools on his T-shirt. You remember, uh, you remember those old T-shirts? You switch in the letters, so instead of saying fuck, yeah. fuck rules, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh god, I just happened to see that the other day. It was uh, I wound up watching. It was uh, a No Way Out. The uh, JBL Big Show uh, cage match with the barbed wire cage match. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I don't know why. That just happened to be there, and I was like, okay, maybe I'll watch it. And uh, Cena faced off a number one contenders match. He was still doing chain gang John Cena. He was kind of heelish, um, but not quite a heel still, um, against uh, Kurt Angle, who was getting just started getting the You Suck chance. So he was the heel in it, theoretically. And Cena came out wearing the Ruck Fool shirt. And I was like, dude, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a long time ago. That was like 2005 or four. Yeah, something like that. You know what I want? You know, I kind of miss Kurt Angle. Uh, well, I mean, if you watch TNA, you see him, but it's not the same Kurt Angle. Definitely not. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. That's why I think. I have to catch up on TNA. Well, and that's honestly. I don't want to because I know lockdown was uh, yesterday. Yes, that's yeah, definitely was that something I I gotta catch up on because we're supposed to see the rematch between Hardy and uh, EC3, and I'm hoping that EC3 can get the belt back. But for storyline purposes, he probably won't. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, well, EC3 is the shit though. Who yeah. the fuck? I know, dude. It's it's crazy how that works. But, you know, it's funny. You mentioned Kurt Angle and how you miss Kurt Angle. And it's funny because you saying that, and I can, I mean, I can see why because with your absolute love for uh, Jordan Gable. I mean, because that's what it was, dude. That's... Hey, I won't lie. Today they did a What of a New on Instagram for WWE. And it was a T-Bone suplex. And to be honest, there was only one fucking T-Bone in the whole... Uh... Instagram, and it was by Becky Lynch. Mm -hmm. Everyone else did some sort of other type of variation. They even had Taz on there, who's known for a T-bone Taz flex, and they did some sort of punk handle slam. Mm -hmm. It was like a non-wrist clutch punk handle slam. Like, you grabbed the guy by his junk and threw him over his head backwards. That's the Taz slam. It was on Angle, actually, speaking of. <laughs> they showed, um, uh, Sheldon Benjamin, Turned his T bone into like some sort of exploder suplex. Yeah. Uh, they showed Randy Orton, which is close, close. And then they showed uh, uh Jason Jordan actually. Jordan did the uh, leg capture. You remember how Taz used to capture the guy's leg up like right by his head? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then flip him over. Jordan used that recently, and uh, they showed that. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, Becky's the other one who actually did a fucking. Right there. Yeah, you know what, and you know you just mentioned that and made me think. I I could have swore, can't remember if it was Becky or Sasha, or somebody, one of the ladies I think, did one of the, like the the shin breaker into a Saito. Uh, that might have been um. I it had it, I think it was on the main roster. It might have been is either Becky or Sasha on uh, on Naomi or Tamina. Probably, probably. Uh... Becky, because you know she's a suplex girl. Yeah, and it was like, to see that, I was like, lift her up with the leg up, shin breaker, right into just a real quick Saito uh, suplex. 
I was just like, dude, where the hell has that been? I mean, I know. Yeah, I, know, right? I mean, see one of those in a long time. I mean, if you, I mean, if you watch our buddy Kevin Cross, he does the Saito, but just to see the women do it, especially with the combination, you don't see those combination moves anymore either. Or the like the shoulder breaker. Like I'm again, speak of the devil. Uh, good transition. Uh, Papa Shango, the Godfather, is uh, going in the Hall of Fame. Um, and ah, the guy who had a finisher was the shoulder. The shoulder breaker. breaker. Yeah. So I mean, and that's one move that like I mean, he used to literally do that, and it was like, oh, cool. That I mean, you don't see that anymore. That would be just a move that you would get the guy down, go for a pin, and it'd be a near fall. Now. I think that'd be a great setup for a crippler crossface. Hell yeah, dude! I mean, either that or go to um, um, shoot. I mean, do something like how uh, Sato Miedo, man, the uh, freaking Pentagon, do that. The the arm, do that, and then go for the arm break. Oof. So I mean, uh, dude, I just I got a little queasy on the thought of how violent that was. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, and and shoot, I mean, again, I know we had a Lucha Underground tonight uh, as we're taping this, uh, and we're going to go back. Oh, that was good, too. I see, and I got to go back and watch it because the, the previous week, dude, Puma freaking showed that he, he owns Pentagon. He could have broken his arm and didn't. So, and I know, I think we mentioned that last week on last week's uh, talk, too, a, a little bit because, yeah, dude, I just, I love the fact that they do things in Lucha Underground that TNA and WWE won't do. I think that's, I mean, it is. It's, uh, it's, remember how going back into WCW days, Eric Bischoff did that little interview and said, hey, for after the fact, for Monday Night War DVD, saying, they're doing this over here. Let me make a lot of noise over here and get everybody's attention. And that's what WC, that's what WCW did. They were different. And to see Lucha Underground, man, they do things that you may see Daniel Bryan jump through the ropes, but you won't see Daniel Bryan do all the craziness that Lucha Underground does. Now, AJ, AJ Styles, I was shocked. I thought he was going to just do a little, just a, a, a ring assisted, uh, like springing move or uh, over the top rope and just a splash. And then on the in the match against uh, uh, on Raw, uh, it was him and Jericho against the couple guys of the Social Outcasts. But for him to jump up, do a springboard, and then the splash, I yeah. was I was like, dude, he's gonna get a talking to in the back because that's unnecessary risk. But that's what people want to see. I know, and that's the sad part is is WWE's gonna tame him down some more. Whereas in Lucha Underground, we well, maybe they won't. Maybe this is what we need is this influx of new talent who's going to bring these new high caliber moves that's going to make other people step up their business. See, and I hope so. I really do because, I mean, you can you can have moments and matches that are slow and plodding and methodical. I mean, a guy like Biggie Langston, months in a while, will still do the abdominal stretch. And it's, I'm glad he does it's, because he makes it so much fun. It's believable, and then he does, yeah, the clapping on the guy's abs. Um, or, or just punching a guy in the stomach. First of all, the abdominal stretch is a classic move, which, yes, it is a rest hold for the guy who's performing it. The guy who's in it's you know, not the most comfortable, but he's catching a breather as well. Mm -hmm. But if it's done just right, there's so much story that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, the cheating thing, the cheating factor's there. You can grab the, the rope. You can grab your partner's hand to pull tighter. Mm -hmm. um, but even to a point... I mean, you don't see too many moves where, like, hey, I'm gonna dr like drop the guy the guy's back on my leg, and then I'm gonna hold him up and push down on his chin and just stretch him that way. You don't see that much anymore. I missed the bow and arrow. That's yeah, that was fun. You, you, you Liger know, used to do that a you, lot. Uh, get the, yeah, seriously, when you crisscross the guy's legs, you're sitting on his back, and you just pull back, and you just ride your knees. Yeah, it's kind of like the old school surfboard, but sideways. Yes, it's freaking classic. And and you know what? In all it's a legit looking submission that can be easily counted into a first pit. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, even again, I I know that they banned it because it looked dangerous. The the curb stomp. I mean, really. No, they banned it because fucking Seth Rollins was over with. Yeah. That was one of the real reasons that they banned. it. They said, oh, they banned it because it's kind of dangerous. But there's also reports going around that they banned it because he was getting over. He's supposed to be the bad guy. Okay, watch it. If he comes back as a face, don't be too surprised if the curb stop returns with him. Yeah, I'd be happy. I would be, because I, I really, I love that move. And I mean, if you go, I mean, and he does it in a different manner where he does the, the run and yeah, up. the stupid super dragon curb 
Well, I mean the old the old school way of doing it, the the super dragon, he grabs the guy's arms back and then stomps on the guy. Well, first he grabs the guy's leg so he can't move at all. Yeah, that's right. And then and then stomps on the guy's back and pushes face first into the mat. He used to do that. I know cheerleader Melissa used to do that back way back at the very start of Shimmer. Um, uh, Burchill did it. Yeah, Paul Burchill. Shit, I forgot about him. I missed that guy. I actually really liked him. I, dude, he, he was more over in his gimmick than he ever was as a regular dude. The freaking pirate thing was hilarious. Uh, and you know what the real reason? It got over because of his bucks and punch, let's be honest. Yeah, Katie Lee. No, William Regal. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. The whole potential incest storyline would have been really interesting if they followed through with it. Yeah, that that definitely takes it a, a little differently, and and again, but I think sometimes you have to do that. You got to push the line a little bit once in a while. I'm not saying you have to go edgier, edgier, but at the time that would have been a perfectly balanced storyline. Well, I think we could have gone. Well, and and I, we just mentioned uh, Katie Lee Birchall. Um, remember, I I don't know, I'm not sure how much TNA you you fully watched because there were. Yeah, I, yeah, the winter thing. I don't know if you remember the the whole spell casting thing between her and Angelina Love. It was stupid. Okay, because I look at that and go, that could have gone so much better if they like let it happen and and be and ha- let her become more of like an evil dark queen kind of thing, and and played off the. I mean, it almost could have even worked, even going further back. With um uh, with Roxy Laveau back when when she was with uh, VKM another bad pun on uh <laughs> on Vince McMahon uh the Voodoo Oh God that was uh... Voodoo Kin Mafia that was uh, Kip and uh, Kip James and BG oh. <laughs> Billy Gunn and Red Dog <laughs> Yeah so I mean sure but it would have made more sense with the, with the Voodoo Queen to have some sort of possession type thing more so than all of a sudden Katie Lee Burchell coming out of nowhere to be See that shit would have worked much better back in the 90s if they did it with Lash LaRue. Oh my god, that's funny. I haven't thought of that name in Seriously, forever. Seriously, the dude was Cajun as fuck. Might as well have him come out with the Voodoo Queen. That would be fun. Yeah. Imagine well, she came out full dress like straight out of Pirates of the Caribbean, man. Mhm. That and she was just all dirty. She just cast Lash and Root came out, man. Just like this fucking king bastard type person. That's funny. Yeah, dude, I forgot about him. WCW back in the day, man. And then he did a little stint with TNA after the uh, that uh, that little summer where they were still getting it all set up. Mm-hmm. I miss the artist formerly known as Prince Iacan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Remember Jeez, Louise. Just the little... I, I would have never thought about that until you said it, because the first mention of Iakea, for me... you Iakea. Well, no, no. For me, with Prince, with the Prince, Prince Iakea, the first thing was, he comes out and tears up the list of Jericho's holds. When when Chris Jericho did the Man of a Thousand and Four Holds promo on, uh, on Dean Malenko... Prince Iakea was supposed to have the next match, and he's getting introduced, and Jericho's still in the ring saying his matches, and he tears up the paper and throws it out of the ring over at Jericho, and you just hear Jericho going, my holds, my holds, like he's freaking out like his list is ruined, and Iakea is just yelling at him like, what the hell is this schmuck doing? Like, get the hell out of the ring, I'm supposed to have a match. (laughs) Iakea was actually a pretty underrated talent. I thought he was pretty good. I enjoyed watching him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that. I mean, the the cruiserweight division of WCW is was probably really the best wrestlers they had on the roster. Most of them were Spanish. Most of them are from Mexico. Yeah, they'd wrestled in Mexico and Japan. I mean, IAK I mean, obviously the Islander. Some of the people that they had, Super Galo. Mm-hmm. And he uh, had a hat glued to his head at all times <laughs> and fake sunglasses. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, we also had as stupid as he looked. We had three Vianos at one point. Yeah, you did. You had uh, uh, El Dandy. El Dandy. Uh, once in a while, you had um, well, obviously. I mean, you had La Parca. Uh, Rey there. Mysterio, Rey Mysterio. Mysterio. I mean, you yeah, had Hoovy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, Cyclope. Like Cyclope, or uh, or um, what's his name? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. So you had a lot of those luchadors, even um, uh, Hector Garza. Yeah. So he looked like he couldn't go, but that guy could fucking go at the time. Yeah, I mean, so the the, the luchadors helped the division, having um, an Ultimo Dragon, dude, and Alex Wright. Ultimo Dragon, still one of the greatest things ever. Uh, dude, I remember that picture. I didn't see that he's wrestling in a WWE. Oh wait, that's gonna be stuck. <laughs> But he does. He does kind of remind me of that. But I just remember that picture of like Ultimo Dragon holding like seven. Nine fucking titles. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He's got three on each arm, two around the waist, one around his neck. Yeah, that was insane. Like, are you kidding me? That that gold weighs more than you. Yeah, and then on top of that, in WCW, like he held the cruiserweight title like what once. But he held it when he was an, an eight-time champion in other companies. Yeah. You know that's that was the ninth friggin' title. They made a big deal about that. It, it would have been it would have been cool though to see like hey like if they would have brought that all them titles into WCW and him do that and well, him. There's a lot of things that go into. That. I know, I know. It just kind of sucks because of all that stuff. Oh, and you know what? I I read something the other day, and I'm a little I'm a little miffed at it because now it, I'm miffed, but I'm also it's a positive for possibly for WWE. Um, okay, what I heard was WWE has offered multiple times contracts to Kenny Omega. And, did, did, did they finally say he, he accepted? No, what I heard was the reasoning why he turned them down in the first place was because of the fact that he stayed, wanted to stay with New Japan specifically because he wanted to wrestle and, and do a program with Kota Ibushi. And Kota Ibushi has been wrestling with New Japan and one of the other companies in Japan. Kota Ibushi, just this week from what I heard, is saying goodbye to New Japan. And he's just going to focus on the other company. And I can't think of the other company's name off the top of my head. Wow. So that's, that's it's, kind of huge. it's a double-edged sword because now... Kenny Omega doesn't get to fight Ibushi, and Ibushi just lost. I mean, New Japan loses Ibushi, but does that mean Kenny Omega might now accept the WWE contract because he doesn't get to do his program that he wanted to do now that he's the uh, the junior heavyweight champion? So, I mean, it's intriguing situation. Ibushi? Yeah, that's that's what I was reading. That shit could easily have happened in America because Ibushi's done some runs here in the states. Yeah, I, I mean, and I just didn't know if they wanted to do like a program for the um um. Let me let me let me look let me look this all up because um it it was just something like I happened to re read earlier and I was like really I mean because at one point in time too they were even they were a tag team together. Yeah, probably I think because uh, I noticed um here it looks like probably 2013. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was just it was just so weird that all of a sudden this stuff came out and I was like, yeah, it's uh let me see here. So it was just from the other day. Um, hat tip to uh, Wrestling Inc. Yeah, that's a talented fucking wrestler. Yeah, hat tip to Wrestling Inc. Um, New Japan is taking another hit. Um, uh, Enohito is reporting. Uh, I guess it's another uh, somebody who covers it. Is reporting that Kota Ibushi is leaving New Japan and DDT to be a freelancer. So Ibushi is real is leaving because of physical and mental toll working for the two companies is taking on him, and Ibushi is he's even starting his own organization called the Ibushi Wrestling Research Institute. He's still going to possibly work for them, but he's not going to be contracted to anybody. So he's not going to be a regular, I mean, consistently necessarily he's anymore. A freelance guy. He's going to be a pay to play. Yeah. So if they want to, but he, this probably might be a good thing for him because he looked like he was injured back uh, last year. They, yeah. The year. Which so yeah. He's still dealing with that. Yeah, he did. Uh, the the DDT show at Ryu Goku. Um, he he did hurt his neck. So um, which kind of sucks. I mean, because New Japan now with losing Ibushi. They just lost. Five huge titles. Yeah, Styles, Gallows, Nakamura, and Anderson. I mean, that's a big deal, dude. And now Bushi. Yeah. 
So that's a. She's a huge. I mean, a lot of people may not realize this, but Koto uh, Abushi is actually a really well-known guy in the independent market. Oh, dude, and you know what is funny? I happened. I posted that thing on on our Instagram. He did the. He did a Sasuke. He did a Ninja Warrior in Japan. And he didn't make it past uh, stage one, but it was funny. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, man, it's just it's kind of crazy. Like, because again, that was one of the reasons that I, I happened to read. I can't find the exact article I read now, um, but they, they were talking about how Kenny Omega basically was kind of sticking around because of if Ibushi. And if that's the case now, and he's going to be just freelancing and doing his own thing, and not necessarily working on contracts specifically with New Japan, where Kenny Omega is basically tied to at the moment. I mean, I can maybe see Kenny Omega saying, hey, if WWE comes a call in and they're willing to help buy out his contract, we might be seeing Kenny Omega in WWE here soon, which would be amazing. I would hope so, because I've been... I know, and that's why I, I, I brought this up because I, I knew you would you would be like, wait, what? <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> so, yeah, dude, it's just kind of crazy how that works, man. Because if that happens, dude, could you just imagine Kenny Omega coming in? And I mean, I know it's not necessarily a dream match for everybody, but to see Kenny Omega in the same possibilities of going up against Neville, going up against Owens, going up against AJ again, going up against... Let's not say guys that he's already wrestled. I mean, Ziggler. Kenny Omega, yeah, you go. Yeah, Ziggler, uh, I mean, uh, Kalisto. Dude, I would love to see him face Kalisto. Claudio, after all these... Yeah, why not? Yeah, against against Cesaro. Hell, if Tyson Kidd... You know what? How does he wrestle a guy like Big Show? That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. Just shouldn't event anything. Yeah, that would I, honestly that would be fun. I mean, I I mean even Kenny Omega against I mean for the love of God Ryback, I mean to have him go against that guy and him have to be the I mean almost like the Ric Flair dirty heel like hey you know what you're cool in my book and he puts up the two sweet for uh, for Ryback and Ryback looks at it and kind of puts maybe goes to put his hand up and he pokes him in the eye. Something little bullshit like that just to get the advantage over Ryback. I mean, just I love Kenny Omega's character. He's evolved so much since going to New Japan. And, I mean, when he was doing the the freaking... When I first saw Kenny Omega, he had a Hadouken. Yeah, I was, was going to say the Hadouken. I hated him for that. <laughs> I hated him so much for that. He used to do Falcon punches. He used to even say, Falcon punch! And punch a guy in the back of the head. Yeah, dude, he's he is a total... I mean... I'm so glad he changed. Could, I hated him for the longest, but I can't deny how fucking talented he is in the ring. Could, and for a few years now, even when I didn't like him, I've been saying he should be in the E. Yeah, well, and... That's and, how good he is! I, and you know what I just thought of? Because you brought up his old uh, video game-ish, Mark-ish past. Could you just imagine if if all of a sudden, at, at the point where all of a sudden the new day is done... And you put him in a program with Xavier Woods. You know they're going to be fighting on up, up down, down eventually. Yeah, exactly. Like to a point the where the challenge has been made. Yeah, I mean, just I, I would love that to happen, but to a point where you can put them on TV. And I mean, for the love of God, it was only what four years ago where Xavier Woods was screaming, "It's morphin' time!" So they. they they basically had the same gimmick at one point in time. Brandon, he is still a geek. Yes, he and is. You can tell he's still a geek with a lot of the shit that he says. Yes. But he's not yelling it's morbid time. Whereas uh, it's over 9,000 on his tights. Yes. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Um, that dude was fun. That's funny. But yeah, dude, I mean, I, I just, when I came across that and I was just like, and I was in the middle of, of a class, and again, uh, dude, I love having downtime in class where I can read news, um, like showing a movie and stuff, so I can literally look on a computer and read wrestling news and read whatever daily politics news and stuff that I like. Um, but yeah, dude, when I came across that, I was like, dude, this is cool. And then of course, 
it's one of those things where it's like I see it, cool, I read it, and then I go on to the next story, and then all of a sudden I don't I don't think about it for a little bit or right? because I get distracted or whatever. But yeah, dude, I'm I'm glad that our tr my train of thought came back down to it because that I knew that was gonna be something that you were gonna freaking freak out about. Yeah, I would definitely be happy if Kenny Omega became one with uh, the. Yeah, that would be that would be. There's a, a lot of guys out there. Jesus Christ! You know, we have to go to the WWE roster for a second. Oh, uh, you, you want you want to shit can some people? Let's see who's necessary or not. Okay, that works. Let's go. WWE.com. <laughs> you are interacting with us right now on Gorilla Blood Radio. We are going to uh, we're going to see how many people are on the roster and that maybe we can shit can. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, shoot. And in general, too, I mean, there's guys, there's guys that need to be moved up that could take the place of the big show, that could take the place of Kane. And... They're, I mean, they're not using these guys. I mean, granted, they're in the main event picture of NXT, but they're never. I mean, you don't move them up. The the underlings there are never going to get their shot. I think you know a few people will definitely be getting moved up soon. We're going to see um, a few new faces either pre or post WrestleMania. I just want to point out something. As ugly as the new website is, yeah. Awful. It is. They have a lot more it stuff. So god awful. But if you look at it, I'm, I'm, so, I'm on uh, WWE.com backslash superstars. The first thing you see right now is the champions. Yeah. And what champions do you see? Triple H, your world heavyweight champion. Kevin Owens, your IC champion. Kalisto, your US champion. Jesus Christ. Uh, the New Day, your tag team champions. Charlotte, your Divas champion. Finn Balor, your NXT champion. Bailey, your NXT women's champion. Dash and Dawson, your tag team champions from NXT. I love the fact that Bailey and Balor are doing like the same pose. <laughs> and she, <laughs> ba <laughs> Bailey's trying not to smile. Oh my god! I just love the fact that you got Dash and Dawson on you. Yeah, that's great. And so I love now. The fact that at least the website is recognizing. The NXT champions as part of the company. Yeah, and and that's the, maybe now finally we'll get a real title match for them at Night of Champions. Yeah, I would love to see that too. I mean, hell, why not for one Night of Champions, one night only, no titles the on. Night of Champions should be the one time that NXT gets a full time, full birth. Yeah, why not? But even to a point, like even if they if they did a build up, like on the on the uh, the NXT show. They do an NXT show live the week before Night of Champions and have champion versus champion, the New Day versus Dash and Dawson. Well, you know what would be even funnier? Instead of having them versus each other, they are tag teaming together. Oh, gosh. And an eight-man tag against the number one contenders. That would be fun. And then the number one contenders get along, but... Dash and Dawson are just too machismo, too manly to beat a guy down for the antics of the New Day, and they all start fighting each other. That would be fun. And Come you on! And it you know, right dude, and you know what's funny? The um, I saw a clip uh, Arn Anderson the other day. Arn Anderson fighting against uh, Alex Wright, and it was just a random, uh, random match. It's been floating around like the past week a lot lately, and it's something that I've seen in, in that the little fifteen second clip that I'm like, dude. Dash and Dawson got to bring that back, and at least in one match do it. Arn Anderson is fighting with Alex Wright, Das Wunderkind, and he goes like he's going to throw a punch, and Alex Wright just ducks. All he does is duck, like he's going to duck the punch, and Arn Anderson grabs him and spikes him on his head, DDT. Nice. Ma match over. Yeah, the double A was godly with that shit. But I'm looking at that going... If Dash and Dawson are in a match like that against a job or tag team, why not do that? Just to show, like, hey, dude, we can beat any team with a, just a DDT where that damn good. Honestly, they didn't have to because they faced a job or tag team. They beat the shit out of one guy for five minutes. He tags out. The next guy gets hit with the shatter machine. Yeah. Match over. Yeah, exactly. One guy had one fucking move and I was taking two knees to the chest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <sighs> and the match was done. That's what it comes down to with those two. They don't fuck around. No. Now they still get paid by the hour. Yeah, no, but but and and the cool part is, I I mean, you go through these the the website even more too. On the superstars page, they show like all the title belts. 
throughout the like the company and then throughout the years as well, which is pretty sweet. They even have the light heavyweight title on here too, from '97 to 2001. They have the dates and everything. World heavyweight championship, the world tag team champ. That was Dude, title. they have the ECW television title on here. Whoa, I missed this belt. The European champion. Yeah. That was like the last time a belt looked like a belt. Yeah, I love the hardcore title. The hardcore title's hilarious. It's an old <laughs> winged eagle <laughs> belt just broken. <laughs> So, but I mean, and then going through the superstar list is freaking great, dude. I mean, they have all these superstars. I mean, they have, I mean, the alumni list is kind of funky. It makes people think that uh, WWE is uh, all crazy and they do. Uh... Internet. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened. All of a sudden, it said you were offline. God damn, my internet likes to fuck me out of nowhere. I hate time warp cable. Yeah, that was just weird. I was gonna text you and be like, "What the heck? Did your power go out in your apartment or something?" No, my cable, my internet just goes the fuck out. No. Oh. But uh, but yeah, man, we're we were looking at the uh, the WWE website, or the layout is not necessarily the greatest, but they have a lot more content than they ever had. It still looks fucking stupid. It does, but okay. Everything's so JavaScript up the wazoo. Yeah, like even to a point, like you hover over an image, and like the person looks like they're like zooming in on them. Brand new, just get bigger. Yeah. Okay. So you want to go through this list then, and we will. Uh, Kind of see what's necessary and and who's who should be still on the roster or who could be used better. Yeah, wow, well, it's, it's just typically in alphabetical order. It's hard to tell. It's alphabetical by not really. <laughs> like seriously, it's like okay, these are the power people in the company right now, tied up maybe. Tied and then up. it and then it goes through like alumni and NXT guys all in combined. Like, I know, I got Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little. Okay. Um. Well, just you got to that that point where that was the main things, and I happen to scroll through with you, and I see Alex Riley, dude. Holy crap, man! The transformation of that guy's character. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that that pissed me off. I was like, I'm waiting for him ne like next week backstage. He's gonna snap. He's Dude, gonna snap. He, he's gonna cripple him backstage somewhere. I really hope that's what they're gonna go with now. It's right. It's like you want perfection. Here's your perfection. And then, dude, and you know what? I mean, I know it. It's been a while since he's been on the main roster. If he's good enough to be on the main roster still, bring him up and have him do the same thing to Dolph Ziggler. Because what's the first line in his song? I am perfection. Let's first see <laughs> how he is coming back. Because remember, for the longest time, we never thought Alex Riley was that good of a wrestler. Oh, well, he okay. was also paired up with The Miz, and they basically had the same gimmick. Yeah, okay, he is never really... Let's be honest, though, we only became a fan of his recently because of his announcement. Yeah, no, he honestly, I I missed his announcing that whole deal, the mini feud that he had with Kevin Owens and Kevin Owens and uh, snapped and attacked him and then oh and then Riley went back at him, which is great, dude. But you know what? It was their way of getting Riley back into the ring. I guess he wanted to wrestle again. Yeah, so you can't fault the guy for doing so. No, not at all. Well, let's see. Uh, there's, there's not gonna be a lot of people on this list. I really want to shit can personally. And it's not really about shit canning. It's more about saying. The talent that they can have coming in, what do they have going for them? Yeah, well, All right? yeah. So, we know Triple H is a part-timer. He's really just, you know, belt warming. Yeah, he's holding the belt just for the time being. So, Omega versus Owens. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, hell yeah. Kalisto. Hell yeah, I would love that. Uh, the New Day. That would be, you know what, that would be a fun one, because Kenny Omega is one of those guys who... 
I think that he has his moments where he can be super serious, he can be psychotic, he can be humorous, and I think that he can... Did you wrestle a nine-year-old Japanese girl? That was... Oh my god, that is one of the best moments in wrestling. If you have never seen it, go YouTube it. It was great. Stop! Insigiri. Yeah. <laughs> and you know it is funny because uh the the young bucks took a took a um a to play from uh the Kenny Omega playbook and actually super kicked a, a, a they did a thing with a, a like a, a 9-year-old boy. It was his birthday and he wanted to meet the young bucks and then the young bucks were mean to him so he started beating up on the young bucks and they were selling it. And then they, and then he, they wound up uh, swinging him off the ropes, and they double super kicked him in the face, and he sold it. The, the kid, they literally looked like they killed the kid, but the kid sold it like a champ, dude. It was great. God, yeah, love so yeah, the stupidest shit ever. Uh, but uh, no, dude. But to, to have him in the ring with the new day, I mean, he could be honestly, he can be one of them if they wanted to make his character that way. He can be their foil, complete foil, where he can just. Based on a promo, he can he can do some just say something different that I mean puts them at like just, what right the now, hell? I'm just interested. Well, fuck, man! If you wanted someone to go against Bray Wyatt, the psychotic saint. Oh, psychic. dude, yeah, that would be fun. Okay, imagine if they brought the Bullet Club in with him and uh, Anderson. Yeah. And, uh, Doc. Yeah. Okay. And, and, I don't think anyone would be upset with that. And you know what? That's another thing, too. Um, I think that they found – they WWE, I think, trademarked a, a new name for the, the, the faction. And I think they're going to call them Bulletproof. I read I read something about WWE doing a trademark for Bulletproof. Well, maybe he'll be Bulletproof. Carl Anderson instead of Machine Gun. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Which, I don't mind either. That's actually a pretty damn good name, right? Yeah, so, so according to, um, it was uh, Finn Balor's Twitter, he posted basically this. It says, bullet what? Question mark. Bulletproof. Hashtag br- bulletproof BC. And it looked like what would have been like the uh, the Bullet Club like old logo. So I mean, I'm just dude. <laughs> I, I don't I'm, know. There's a lot of potential going around, but there's also a lot of talent WWE has uh, missed out on. Look at Ricochet and uh, uh, I'm sorry, Prince Puma. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, Lucha Underground. Yeah. Okay. He has got to be one of the best friggin' talents in pro wrestling right now. To the point where at a PWG show, a guy tried to figure out who he was. <laughs> Have you seen that video? No. There's a video floating around. Actually, I think it was posted by one of the uh, uh, Young Bucks. I think it was Nick Jackson posted it. And it was a video of a guy just pointing at his face like, oh, wait. I know you. You are the king of the pool. was like, no! Ricochet's like, no! Every time he's like about to say it, and the crowd starts going, no, he's not! No, he's not! <laughs> That's no, great. he's not! That's great. Before the guy even gets to say that his footprint's a puma. <laughs> but he's wearing the puma tights! That's funny. <laughs> oh, dude, that's great. That's pretty oh, good. Oh, man. Yeah, like I say, sometimes you have to have those comedy spots at a wrestling match. Yeah, exactly. To be entertaining. I, that, the, to me, it's like when it goes too far, there's like too much, or like there's, you know, a fake hand grenade. Yeah. You know, that gets on my nerves, or, you know, the Osiris, Pyre, uh, the Osiris portal hypnotizing people to dance in the middle of the ring. Yeah, or uh, there was that one uh, Chikara thing where they played, uh, they were doing, like, baseball. Yeah, I just... <laughs> there was one funny one that I think PWG did where uh, there was an eight-man tag and everyone was wrestling in slow motion. Yes! I've seen that Until one. Until one guy just gets into the ring and hits everyone's like, stop it! Stop it! You're an idiot! Stop it! <laughs> that was... Oh, God, it was... Like Tommaso Chapa did his whole thumb off the butt uh, guy's butt routine. <laughs> Just did it in slow motion. Oh man, that was great. But uh, but even too it's like clips, yeah yeah. But get, getting back to with Kenny Omega and saying, dude, him working with Finn Balor again. Fucking him working with John Cena. 
That would be fun. I just want to see AJ Styles and John Cena. Yes, that would be dream match come true, dude. Like that people wanted to see. Let's be honest, John Cena. If he's just not going to be booked as John Cena, be booked as a normal guy who wrestles, he can have some amazing matches. Yeah. Look what he did with Kevin Owens. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, Kevin Owens had a fantastic trilogy of matches. Easily feud of the year last year. Yeah, and and again, for Cena to to think of him that much, it put him over in his first match there with the in the main roster. Oh, uh, and I have a feeling like Cena wanted to put him over more, and just he was told not to. Yeah, so he he let Owens beat the crap out of him though. Yeah. There's no doubt about. Okay, we're just gonna go 25 minutes. You kicked my ass for 20 minutes. We're good. Yeah, yeah, that's. But yeah, look, the idea of Kenny Omega maybe against Brock Lesnar as much as I hate Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Uh, Rusev against anyone has been good. Well, yeah, and that's the sad part is the League of Nations is is, is done, dude. That that whole faction thing is just bullshit. Let's be honest though, uh, Barrett's gonna be gone soon. Yeah, Barrett basically so said he's not gonna resign. Announced pretty much that he's not gonna resign. Mm-hmm. Honestly, as much as I like Barrett, it's no big loss because he was never gonna go anywhere because the guy can't stay healthy. Yeah, he's been having shoulder injuries and stuff. And, yeah. I mean, he can't even wrestle until recently. I think some set. I think what Thursday's gonna be his first match back. Probably. It's been like it's been almost what six months, at least. Seriously. Now let's see Kenny Omega versus Seth Rollins. Now, I'm sure Kenny Omega has wrestled Tyler Black at one point. Yeah, way back when. Tyler Black is not Seth Rollins. Yeah, Tyler Black has uh, evolved. <laughs> Very much so. Oh my god, it's hard to believe that those two are the same guys. Yeah. Well, dude, it's hard. It's funny to think. If you look back at Ring of Honor not even seven, eight years ago, and how many of those guys now are big name guys in the business? How many of these guys have I actually seen? Yeah, exactly. I've watched what... Claudio how many times? Yeah. I mean, Tyler I've Black. Seen Okay. Daniel, Daniel Bryan. I've seen Daniel Bryan's last ROH match. Yeah. I've seen uh, AJ Styles. I've got to watch him live against Okada and Michael Elgin. Alright? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen Dean Ambrose when he was John Moxley. I actually saw a few matches of his. <laughs> I just remember him with pink hair in DNA. Oh, you can fault. Uh, Jesus Christ. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta see about this. What else have I seen? I gotta go through this. But seriously, I've uh, damn man, it's hard to believe just how many guys that I've watched who are now in the E or have spent some time in the E, like Colt Cabana, uh, Kevin Owens. I've seen plenty of Kevin Owens. What about Sammy you? Zane, you, you of. Your boy Brody Lee. I just got up to him right there, Luke Harper. Yeah, or, God, that's well, and you didn't like Pac beforehand, but now you're a Neville fan. I am a Neville fan because Neville now knows how to wrestle and tell a story and not just do high spots. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about the balance. There's just a lot of people out there that I've had the luxury of seeing live that have in some way made it. You know, Sarah Del Rey is a trainer. Shoot, go and I mean, you go on She's that. Head trainer. Uh, what's his name uh, from the old NWA? Uh, um, oh my God, why am I bl- Scrap Iron? There you go. I couldn't think of the. I knew it was an A name, and my brain wasn't working. <laughs> you know, these are guys that I've had the luxury of seeing because I went to a lot of ROH shows. Mm-hmm. It's just like you sit there, Seth Rollins, dude. He's retired of black. I've seen this guy headline so many shows. Now he's the most over heel at one point. Well, and we just had, uh, just recently at a taping, we had Austin Aries make his debut in NXT. You got Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe's uh, on the NXT roster. Samoa Joe and Sami Zayn are headlining uh, repeated episodes of NXT in a row. Yeah, dude. Okay. Sami Zayn, before. Sami Zayn, who is El Generico in friggin' Arabic. <laughs> that dude, that was the greatest freaking thing ever. I'm like really, it, I know it's totally made up and totally f- fake, but whoever the engineer at Google Translate that did that, bravo. I don't, I don't know how that works. 
that dude that's great because i've seen google has a tendency to do that because at one point in time there was a thing on google maps where you could type in wherever your destination is and like type in i'm gonna i want driving directions to china and it will literally tell you drive like from new york it'll tell you drive all the way through to california get on a goddamn ship go to japan drive through japan Gra- uh, grab a kayak and paddle over to China. Like it. That's too labor intensive. It, I don't have time for that. But it was just funny because they they tried to make it funny like the whole time like like really like just jump in your canoe and paddle all these miles over. <laughs> so. Still, just like the, the way that whole thing played out, that was just great. Yeah. Well, I mean, and even but, too. Uh, look, I'm just. Even the idea of Kenny Omega coming over, and if we get more people from Japan, like Japan, like Kushida, man. Oh, dude, yeah. I can mean, we bring the time splitters? Yeah, just I mean, even I Alex mean, Shelley has belonged in the WWE for ten years now. Mm-hmm. I agree. I totally, I feel you on that one. And and even back when it was the Motor City Machine Guns, I wanted to see them there. And now I that I don't blame you as much as I'm not a Saban fan. You know, the two of them were a hell of a tag team together. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, honestly, in, in their prime against, I, I would have loved to have seen them against London and Kendrick, and they could have put on a hell of a match. Oh, God, I miss Lundrick so much. Yeah, I mean, hell, triple threat match with the Young Bucks. <laughs> I just miss London and Kendrick. I just miss Kendrick, honestly. Me, Brian Kendrick was great. <laughs> he was basically like, I'm better than you, and half the time he was high. <laughs> Uh, that poor the guy. The thing is, he knows he made a mistake now. Yeah, well, and he he's tried to do stuff with WWE. He was, I mean, mainly training Eva Marie for when she's getting started. I mean, that now it was a year too late, but he's still he's trying to make good with WWE, which I mean, I'm I'm glad. But yeah, still, it looks like they didn't part on completely horrible terms. No, but I mean, even to a point like I know like Big, uh, Big Zeke. Uh, Big Rick in, in Lucha Underground. We haven't seen him this season yet, uh, unless he came on today and you saw him. But I, because I haven't. No, he's not there just yet. But but Ezekiel Jackson was one of those guys who I think had potential to do a lot with WWE. He was the last official WWE version of the ECW champion when that show went off the air, uh, and then came over and he was the bodyguard for the Brian Kendrick for a while. He was a bodyguard. I think at one point in time, maybe for like a day or two for, I think it was, he, he might have jumped in there after Brodus Clay was supposed to be Del Rio's bodyguard, and then he stopped, and then Zeke was there for a day or two. Um, and then he got fired. Yeah, and so, I mean, he had potential. He, I mean, he's not a stupid man. They, they, they storyline made him look like he was an idiot, like reading Hop on Pop and the Cat in the Hat books backstage. No, but I think they kind of, they, they were really deceptive. Because Kendrick was cutting a promo, mm-hmm. and then Kendrick's kind of like, uh, "What am I thinking about here?" And yes, yeah, Zeke is sitting on a um, one of those trailer totes, mm-hmm. reading the Cat in the Hat, quoting Sun Tzu, <laughs> um. and the Art of War. Okay, so that was obviously an inside joke. <laughs> Like, there was no question about it. Zeke was not a stupid man. But, uh, I just, I don't know why they, they just made him read the I mean, Dr. Seuss. Maybe that was his idea. Yeah. Like, the idea of this guy is like, you know, oh, I'm just going to sit here and read the cat in the hat, and I'm going to enjoy it. Oh, you need me to quote something? Fine, I'm going to quote Sun Tzu. He was good. I liked it. It was kind of... wasn't great. He wasn't a passive talent. It, but the dude had charisma, and I think he could get over. And you can see him which underground the talent that he had. Yeah, and, and on top of that, too, you, you just uh, reminiscing about that, that whole promo, it made me think back to the backstage subtle hints at uh, EC3 and Brodus Clay, well, Tyrus, being Brodus Clay and, and the whole idea about dancing and, and uh, getting funky. Oh, yeah. You want to see Tyrus, Tyrus dance? Huh? You want to see Tyrus dance? Yeah. Tyrus starts swinging the leg. Yeah. <laughs> like the legs start shaking like it's about ready. Just like, you're not going to get any dancing from Tyrus. Yeah, and then, yeah, backstage them, just the little subtle things about, yeah, there's like, nobody calls you a Funkasaurus. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I mean, WWE, I mean, 
They they have so much potential there. And and the fun part is they missed the mark on some guys that TNA is swooped on and Lucha Underground is swooped on. I mean, EC3 was a WWE guy, dude. And, I mean, Galloway. He was in a, was in a season of NXT. Yeah. Uh, the season that um, Curtis, uh, what's his name? Uh, Johnny Curtis. Fandango. Fandango. Yeah. You know, Johnny Curtis was actually really talented when you want him to wrestle. Yeah. Um, you know, he was on the same season. He was teamed up with Daniel Bryan. Bryan was playing, trying to pretty much to play the straight man to Derek Bateman being batshit crazy. Yeah, pretty much. And a lot of times, Daniel Bryan just couldn't stop laughing. Because <laughs> it was really fucking funny. They were supposed to be Team DB together. Yeah. And then a little while later... Daniel Bryan, along with Percy Watson and several other guys. I mean, <laughs> Daniel Bryan. Uh, <laughs> Derek Bateman. I mean, um, Derek Bateman, along with Percy, Wa- Percy Watson. So oh, yeah! Were sh- I liked it. Yeah. He looked like... Er- the- oh, yeah! Yeah, he was like he was like freaking... Uh, it was like watching Eddie Murphy wrestle. Eddie Murphy and Urkel had a baby, and it was Percy <laughs> Watson. <laughs> it was! It really was! But he was fun! Yeah, yeah. He was he the... And then they shit canned him. Yeah, poor guy. But yeah, but you know what? Derek Bateman came into. We all knew he was going to be EC3. A lot of us were pitching him on, like, Derek Bateman. Really? Really? That fucking guy. I think we all said that. Yeah, yeah. And he's then just. We all looked and went, oh, come on. Then he came out and just like, wait, what? Yeah. And his jokes. What? His jokes that he. He still does the jokes. He, But he, he's subtle with them. I mean, uh, I love the fact. He ain't a straight up comedy guy. No, he's guy not. Has just the charisma. He oozes the charisma of him. And and it's that's scary how over he is as a heel for two years. One double switch, and he's the most over face in the company. And again, over those two years, he's lost one match. Legitimately been pinned, submitted, or whatever it was. He lost a match already pinned. Uh, one match, two years. And it's not it's it's not like he hasn't lost. It's not like he hasn't lost. He's he lost. Hey, remember, Rusev won a whole year without getting pinned. Yeah, but it was it. I mean, it's he completely counted out a few times, but but yeah, but with Rusev, it's a totally different story because Rusev, for the most part, I mean, really didn't have a microphone. It was Lana doing the talking for him, and yeah, even but Rusev didn't, was a guy who didn't. Need he didn't to need to, but with with EC three having to talk on a regular basis. It just made the character all that more special, and having midway through. I think there's definitely different levels to how well they are. Well, to me, Rusev is a main event caliber wrestler who's not getting a main event birth like he should. Yeah, no, I I, I can see that. Sixty three came in and he was not main event caliber when he started. Yeah, especially them but coming. He was into the main event. Well, and especially them starting it off like I mean, he's Dixie's nephew, and him coming in saying he's the greatest thing since sliced bread, and they bring in all these ringers, and, and he, uh, dude, that was the best. Like that really showcased how he can talk on the mic and be in the ring, and he, I mean, he he made the jobber dudes look like a million bucks. I agree. EC3 is very talented. Norm Furman, dude. But when he first started. <laughs> Let's be honest, though, when he first started, he, he was, it, that's where a lot of the you can't wrestle chants come from. Yeah. And then, okay. again, the well, thinking. with guys like Lashley, Kurt Angle, Sting, how many other talented wrestlers have been in the ring with? Yeah, he's going to look they like. Say the best way to learn is on the job. Exactly. And, and again, there goes his wit again. There goes his comedy stuff where. You can't wrestle. I disagree. You can't wrestle. I'm very good. I mean, seriously, not many people would have come up with that on the fly. Maybe Jericho, maybe The Rock, but nobody would have thought that that would have come out of EC3 and would have been something that got him over more. The crowd appreciated that, and they knew it was coming after a while after doing it. Yeah. I mean, he had a feud with Rockstar Spud of all people. Oh, dude, he made Rockstar Spud look like a million bucks. He really did. And there's a guy at one point who came into the company who really couldn't wrestle. Yeah, no, Spud. Spud was just very, very average. I mean, he won the he well, won the boot camp. Very, very average. But they worked off each other so well for 
the longest time. Yeah. Whether it's as a team or against each other. I mean, and, and you know what is funny? Just thinking now, like, everybody knows, like, Grado is, like, super over. I mean, he's fun as hell to watch. Jesus Christ, the guy comes out in a fanny pack and he weighs, like, 12 pounds weight. And he comes out to freaking Madonna, like, like a prayer. Uh, <laughs> but, dude, he put EC3 in the ring with Grado, and he'll make Grado look like a million bucks. And Grado's not the greatest of wrestlers, either. But EC3 will sell it like crazy and make it, I mean, and make it a fun match to watch. See, that's kind of why I like guys like EC3. The ones who are willing to give back. Mm -hmm. Okay? Shawn Michaels did that shit all the time. Yeah. And now Jericho's Shawn doing it. go in there and wrestle a broom and make the broom look good. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Why not put the broom over? <laughs> that's true, too. But it'll make the broom look fucking good. Yeah, that's why it was. That's why, like, when you get guys like Hogan and Hall and Nash in in WCW, their egos played up too much. Whereas, yeah, like you're saying, Shawn Michaels. Over, right? Who? Mick Foley oh hell over. yeah! Chris Jericho's doing that with AJ Styles right now. Yeah, but Chris Jericho, you know, this is Chris Jericho from five years ago. Maybe I'd be a little bit more impressed. Yeah, I mean, he's All Chris right, Jericho I'm part timer. Chris Jericho, part timer, part time wrestler, part time rock star. So, but yeah, it just it doesn't work for me. I'm I'm sour on Jericho. As well. But but uh, I do give him credit. But it's like you know Jericho's gonna lose. Yeah, well, overall, eventually, <laughs> there's memes going around now of Jericho and uh, and uh, AJ being uh, Will Ferrell and uh, John C. Riley yeah. and best friends, the Is step brothers. Friends now? Yeah. Yeah, Step Brothers. Yeah, I was just like, oh god. I've never seen yeah, I haven't either. But I, I, when you put those two idiots together, it's like, just I can't help but just smack myself in the forehead and just shake my head at everything on the screen. Because even like Talladega Nights was just ridiculous. <laughs> so, but uh, man, yeah, I mean, there's there's so much good stuff out there that just in general. That they could be done on WWE main roster that they're doing on NXT or that they're doing subtly in the mid card that should be broadcasted a little bit more or that TNA might do that nobody gives a damn about because it's TNA or that New Japan is done but nobody knows what it is because not everybody knows about New Japan or Ring of Honor. I mean, granted, Ring of Honor has a syndicated TV show. New Japan now has their show. It's, I mean, they're like basically a year behind in the United States. But to get a chance to see some of the, I mean, the matches that are on the regular basis on New Japan on television every every week or so over there. But Let's again, honest, not every match is great. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the shoot fighting. Essentially, I mean, it's 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 they say strong style. There's two different types to me. There's Japanese style, which to me is like strong style, where they're more they're more trying to go for the realism. If you ever watch All Japan Pro Wrestling, Misawa, Kobashi, that's strong style. See, and if see, even for me, like even stuff like right now, um, you got like Makabe and uh, I mean, and some of these other guys that are out there. Uh, Sakuraba once in a while comes in and does stuff, and those guys, that's more like MMA shoot fighting to me. I mean, and that's still considered strong style, but but like the, but then you got Shinsuke Nakamura who calls himself the king of strong style, and he is like freaking Michael Jackson reincarnated out there sometimes, but he can MMA fight with the best of them too. See, I don't like that's how strong style kind of evolved into, you know, too much of the mixed martial arts striking stuff like that. I miss, you know, suplexes and shit. Yeah, no, I, 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 I mean, I like the hybrid styles of stuff, but it's like, I don't know, I just, I... Yeah, but to me, you know, like, the strong style, like I said, the Masawas, the Kabashi, the Taos. Yeah, I mean, I just... You know, I mean, Kabashi had the finisher, the diamond head, uh, uh power bomb, the burning hammer. Yeah, I was gonna say the burning... Yeah, fuck. yeah, exactly. But yeah, for me, though, it's like, if I wanted to watch an MMA match, I'd watch an MMA match. Like if I'm yeah, watch seriously. if I'm watching wrestling, I want to see like logic to it. I just don't want to see guys punching or like having a chop battle, dude. Like for 15 minutes. Well, there's nothing wrong with a good chop battle. I mean, 
let's be honest. When uh, Eric's, oh god, what was his name? Was it Eric Stevens? Yeah. Chooch? Who? Oh my god, I, I used to go to ROH at the time. There's a feud between um, Roderick Strong and his group, and um... The, that was, would it, was that the, during the decade? Years? No. Or Age no. of the Fall? No, it was like Roger Strong and the Resilience or Reliance. Okay. And uh, he would wrestle a guy named Eric Stevens, I believe his name was. Or uh, we used to really love this guy. He was big. He was bulky. He kept going choo choo when he'd run from one oh, corner gosh. to the other. We nicknamed him Chooch. Nice. Uh, very talented. But they would do these chop offs in the middle of the ring. And, oh God. Oh. Ah, here it is. The No Remorse Corps. That's what okay. it was. And then it was uh, against Boston Aries, because that's when their tag team, they broke up. Okay. And he uh, formed the faction with uh, Rocky Romero and Davey Richards. This is before, of course. The Wolves. Uh, the Wolves. The American Wolves. Strong's opponent was Aries and his group, the Resilience, with Matt Cross... We all know as yeah, as uh, the M Dog twenty as uh, what am I missing? Who the fuck is he now? Oh, I didn't know that. Which what you were going for? Uh, yes, uh, El Hijo de Havoc, <laughs> son of Havoc. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Stevens actually wrestled at one of the shows that I went to. There was a double header. There was a matinee show on Sunday and a show on Saturday. And, oh, damn, he retired. That's depressing. Anyway, he wrestled the Ring of Honor match uh, for the Full Impact Pro title against Roderick Strong, and it was one of the best matches nice. of the night. Yeah. Oh, man, I gotta see why he retired. What the hell? Just seeing he was trained by Roddy, too. He was good. That's He's fun. not a strength coach. Oh, that's yeah. cool. He owns a powerlifting gym in Sarasota, Florida. Oh, good on him. Dude, he used a doctor bomb as his finisher. Oh, sweet. Yeah, the gut wrench power bomb. It wasn't, even, it wasn't a sit out version, it was a layout version. The same one that, uh. Um. What's his name? The one who never wins matches anymore. In. Beat people. Oh, Swagger. Yeah, Swagger. The one that Swagger uses. Yeah. You ever notice, uh, I always call that the Dr. Bomb? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he used that. That was his finisher, man, and, uh, he had some really good matches. The dude could go. I remember he wrestled Goshi Ozaki in a great match. Dude, that's a name I haven't heard of in a long time. I know. That was a guy who was actually, uh, you know, at one point they were looking at Morishima. For the nice, they they had a tryout match with him back in I think 2008 or nine, and the idea was to bring him in and have him go with um Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas would manage him and Mark Henry at the time, nice. and they'd be like this world Atlas, and they'd bring in someone from maybe Mexico or somewhere else, and they'd make him be bringing these big muscle guys or just these big men wrestlers and be this little crew of his and he'd be like a heel manager. <laughs> my God, my friend and I still reminisce about that idea and how much what could have happened. Because yeah. it's such a good idea. Damn, man. There, yeah, there's there's just there's so much, dude. There's so much stuff that could happen that only people who are either regional or brand loyal to Ring of Honor or TNA or New Japan or wherever that only they're going to get to see. And it's sad because WWE has such that reach that I'm glad that they're working with Evolve. I'm glad WWE is. Because and that's how we get Gargano and Ciampa and, uh, and you know what? And I'm hoping and praying that Timothy Thatcher is the next one to get moved up because that dude's a beast. That dude is like William Regal. He has the same, he's a British guy, he's just straight up in your face, can mat wrestle the hell out of you, and put, and then just 
just knock your teeth out. That's it. He is such a good wrestler. He's wrestled out here in in the Bay Area as well. I've seen him. Come on, Anthony Meach is on the roster. Really? That dude's talented. Yeah, I I I I caught Meach one time at a uh, house show here. Uh, Just a random uh, show. I think it might have been Pro Wrestling Syndicate or Impact Championship Wrestling. Whichever one it was, Meach was part of like an eight man clusterfuck of a match. The dude. One match! He stuck with me! Eight guys in the match! Nice. He stuck with me. What does that tell you? Yeah, exactly. Um, and shoot. They had him for a while. Well, and, and, yeah, exactly. And, and you know what? Also, too, I mean, we mentioned Evolve. They're doing their thing, too. I mean, again, being with WWE, they also help them get into, uh, doing a show out there in Dallas before Mania. You want to hear who's on the who's on the card here? Let me let me pull this up. I'm trying to get everything going. Um, individual events. There you go. Evolve. Okay. So Tim Thatcher, you got the tag team champions of Galloway and Gargano. So TNA and WWE guys working together in Evolve. Yeah. That's pretty. Actually, there's a uh, an interview recently with Gargano on I think uh, Cage mm-hmm. something or other. And he actually mentioned that. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. He, he really mentioned that as being something real interesting for the business. Yeah. Chris Hero is on this card. Tommy End. I don't know that name off the top of my head. Um, Sammy Callahan. Uh, Marty Scruil, uh, Scruil. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. against Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay is a name that keeps coming up recently a lot. I don't know why I, I I haven't seen any of his matches. I gotta make sure I go look up stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, catch it says catch point of Drew Gulak, Matt Riddle, tr- uh, Tracy Williams, and T.J. Perkins. And then the premier athlete brand of Anthony Nice and Caleb Connolly with SoCal Val and Andrea. Damn, Anthony Nice is a hell of a talent. Yeah, and then that's a guy whose name you don't hear. Yeah, and then that's another one too, where another company where you will see Ricochet occasionally too. Um, I mean, just on the main on one of the main things here, um, the um, what's it called? The W, what is it? WNW or whatever the hell this thing is called that that does the uh, the broadcasts. Um, they they have the uh, Ricochet. Is going to be and against Will Ospreay in the main event. So I mean that's uh, again another guy that he works with Lucha Underground yet he works with Evolve, which is a part of like now the umbrella that is WWE, even though it's not officially a WWE product. So it, I mean soon enough, dude, they're going to be pulling guys from Evolve up to the main. You know they yeah, I mean we've seen, I mean, like you said, you've seen it with Gargano and Champa. Um, and I have a feeling that Gargano and Ciampa are getting as much um, play as they are mm-hmm. because they're eventually going to get signed. Yeah, oh no, no doubt. And then here's the fun part. What about Chris Hero, he was in WWE. He had his chance. And now all of a sudden WWE has the umbrella. Remember, they actually separated on good terms apparently. Well, Chris Hero couldn't freaking get rid of his paunch. He didn't try. Yeah, that was the sad part. <laughs> he didn't try. If he just slimmed up a little and got rid of that thing, I think we'd have... Kevin Owens wouldn't be KO right now. It'd yeah. be Cash or something. Yeah, exactly. And we'd all be saying, oh, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> that was for free, Chris. You could have had that for free. Well, and the fun part about that whole situation is WWE didn't have to waste any extra money on product. They probably had a bunch of KO stuff still ready to go. <laughs> so they just had to print Frank Owens' fight on it. Yeah, just yeah, they just printed it right over the top of the KO. <laughs> that's man, oh, that's so good. But yeah, dude, I mean, it's gonna be fun to see. I mean, how things could go because again. You know WWE is watching indie wrestling now again, which is great. 
I mean, they're still looking at their guys from football, and they always will. I mean, and it's unfortunate sometimes that those guys, I mean, do get there. But some of them do well enough to where it's 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 believable. I mean, Baron Corbett is one of those guys that I think is is destined to be on the main roster here. I'm thinking after Mania. Um, and he's a football guy. He wasn't a wrestling guy to start out. He he played for the Arizona Cardinals. He was a football. He's a nozzle. Yeah, he is, and that's another reason why I think he his character fits him perfectly. It's basically him turned up to eleven, and he may not be the most deserving person to get that contract, but a lot of people aren't. But he's also one of those guys where he's worked his ass off. He's basically one of those guys who's kind of next in line, and he's got the work ethic to, to I think move up to the main roster and he can go with I mean hell you could put him in a feud and have him go one on one with Luke Harper right now and that would be fun to watch because it's two big men who can actually go I think it'd be fun to see something like that or I mean um, I still want to call him freaking Uha uh, <laughs> Apollo Cruz. I know Apollo Crews, that guy, honestly, I mean, right, he's, he's going to be, honestly, if if something doesn't change here in the next few years, he's going to be the guy that our buddy Nick Anthony is cheering for as the next black world heavyweight champion. He's got that John Cena-esque-ness to him right now. It's just kind of, he's got to grow into it mentally. Because I don't think he's he's ready for the the promo stuff yet, but he's gonna he's be there. He even said that in um on the uh, yeah the show Breaking Ground. Yeah. But he's he's gonna get there, dude. I just I have this good feeling about him because he came in and that that first match that he came out to the ring and he looks at the crowd and just goes, "Wow." And the crowd responded to him. Yeah. I know. I was in it. Yeah. Just yeah. That's yeah. Law Nation debuted. And we went apeshit for Apollo Crews. Mm-hmm. And him him in that match against Balor, I mean, they did that match that was one time, and then they, they messed it up with uh, Corbin coming in and ruining it. But then they did the rematch, and, dude, he held, he held his own with Balor. He definitely held his own with Balor. I don't think anyone's going to deny the talent that Uha Nation or Apollo Crews as he is now. Yeah, has. yeah. I mean, I think we all saw instantly that he was going to be a top-tier talent before he was even signed. The fact that he was signed just shows how important and impressive the guy is. And the fact that he's already a top-tier moneymaker in NXT Mm -hmm. has... And he's another guy that came out of Evolve. Yeah. Formerly Dragon Gate USA. (laughs) So, I mean, that's... that. I'm I mean, trying to find a list. I don't know if you saw the list. There was a list online, someone put online a couple of days ago, maybe early, last, late last week. Uh, someone tweeted out, you know, a list of 20 people from 2012 WWE should hire. Or like 21 people. It was uh, just like a pretty much like a pretty typed out list. And six of them are like, five or six of them are already on the company. Uh, let's see. I'm trying uh, to find it. List a uh, list of people from 2012. Looks like people WWE should hire. Man, I wish. Former WWE superstars who deserve new contracts. I found one. Let's see what this one is. That's on. an interesting list. You should open that and, up just in case. Okay, and this one is from 2012. So, guys, WWE should hire back. Uh. Primo and Carl, uh, Carlito specifically, but Primo and Carlito, they well, show. We have Primo, yeah, we still have Primo, uh, but Carlito specifically. Um, uh, the Brian Kendricks on the list. Okay, we agree with that. Katie Lee. Mm. I don't think so. I don't think so anymore. No. She's not no. relevant. Um, Her TNA time was not that great. Yeah. But. Um, Masters. Is on this list. This is uh, from uh, it's a Bleacher Report list uh, by. I will agree with Masters. Mordetsky has come a long way, and GF, GS, uh, GS, GFW Global Force Wrestling has done wonders to help him um, as well. Um, 
Oh my god. And they put his WWE name for the love of God. Scotty Goldman. <laughs> no, thank you. I like Boom Boom, Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana was on that list, too, and I just went, no. You don't like him. I do. I think Colt Cabana's hilarious. He has a bit funny for a while. When he came back from the E, he wore himself down. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Batista's on this list. Oh, found it. Montel Von Davies Porter's on this one. Uh, Shelton Benjamin. Uh, Johnny. See, actually, you know what? I wanted to bring up Shelton earlier, and I never forgot because so. Sidetrack. Side Remember when I mentioned Instagram and the Water Maneuver? Yeah. And one of them was Shelton Benjamin. Mm -hmm. The reason I brought that up is I actually wanted to say I miss Shelton Benjamin. I watched it. I actually said, "Huh." Trying to wish Benjamin was back. Yeah. And then uh, Johnny Moore, uh, Johnny Mundo, John Morrison, and then yeah, Chris Jericho, who's still there. So, all right. Now what? Now what's your? I can agree with Johnny Mundo. Yeah, he's dude. He's way better than than he he was beforehand. I mean, as a singles wrestler, as charismatic as he is, he's he's John better. Morrison sucked. Yeah, he's better now. He's way better now. Yeah. All right. So Rob Naylor, who worked for NXT. Posted on his Twitter oh, a list he made back in 2012. I did Google see this. Sign. I did see this get posted. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk about some of these people. And I know we're probably going to say yes to 95% of them. And some, yeah, some of them are actually signed, which is great. Yeah, because number one is, who do you think? Um, I think, I want to say AJ Styles or somebody you had on that list. AJ's not even on this list. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I know I saw the list, but I can't remember who was He's on. He's in the WWE right now. Sami Zayn, Kevin, yes. okay. El Generico. El Generico is number one on this list. Number two is actually two people. It's a tag team. Oh, that was the uh, the Bucks. No. No, was it, or was it, who was it then? Was Man it? Up. Oh, the, the, the Briscoes. Which I still agree with. Yeah, they should, yeah, they just gotta make sure that. Uh, I remember, uh, this is 2012, so some of these guys. They should just gotta, if they did sign him, they gotta have Mark tame down that beard. <laughs> no, just let him join the Wyatts. <laughs> they are, they can't be any more white family than actually being fucking Bray Wyatt, okay? <laughs> Let's be honest, if them boys showed up, they're either gonna feud with the Wyatts, or they're gonna be members of the Wyatts. Yeah. And I wouldn't be bothered by either. Yeah, I would. Number three... Adam Cole. Oh, dude, yeah. Baby! Oh, hell yeah, dude. Number four. Well, unfortunately, he's off being a prince right now. Ricochet. <laughs> yeah. It's well, it's a former prince. Uh, Devitt. <laughs> I was gonna say Devitt. Yeah. yeah. Number six. The guy we were just gushing over a little while ago. Uh, which? Oh, uh, Kenny Omega. I was gonna say which one. We've been gushing over a lot of people tonight. That is kind of true, but uh, the next one is the one who we think is gonna be bulletproof. Ooh, uh, freaking Anderson and Gallows, yeah. yeah. No, not Gallows. But this Anderson. Is before Gallows, this is 2012, so well, Gallows wasn't really. And, and you know what? The fun part is, he, Carl Anderson, never got the recognition he deserved here in the states. I've seen him wrestle a couple of times um, when I was helping out with um, Pro Wrestling Revolution. Um, the It's a Lucha Libre fed, but they had a bunch of white guys as the Border Patrol, as a faction. And so they had – Anderson was one of them once in a while, depending on the town that they, they were brought in. So there were basically only like three or four gringos on the whole show, and everybody was a luchador. And the, all the white guys, every single time, were part of the border, the, the the border patrol faction. And to see Anderson up close and and see him wrestling, and be able to lucky enough to film him, I mean, dude, he's good, man. He is damn good. It's about time he made it to the. Yeah. I know Matt Bloom's happy about that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> Another one we were gushing over earlier, and rightfully so, Alex Shelley. Yes. Well, at the time, it was free of TNA. Yeah, which would have been awesome. <laughs> a woman who still, I think, could be signed. 
and would be a real unique flower in the bouquet that is the Divas Division, Christina Von Erie. Oh, dude, really? I didn't. I don't remember seeing her name on that list. Yeah, I've gotten it. It's right here, number nine. I'm looking right at. It. Yeah, I. Yeah, she's a good one too. She's the GFW champion, women's champion right now. Mm-hmm. If you're going to talk about someone who's really talented, it's got a unique look that would definitely get a few people interested. Mm-hmm. It's hard. That's a, yeah. That's another one that I, I was very fortunate enough to film. <laughs> number ten, your friend, not mine, Cole Cabana. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Yeah, Kalisto. Yep. Dude. Number 12. Ha. Ha. Samoa Joe? Hey. Oh, that was the ooh-ha thing. I was thinking you were doing the, the Samoa Joe music, the ooh-ha, ooh-ha, ooh-ha. Maybe a little both. Yeah. Anyway, number 13 and number 14 technically are connected, and I can't believe I've seen these names on here. Harlem? Freaking the bravados. The bravado, the bravado brothers. Now, granted, I've seen them live, and as goofy as they look, they're pretty damn talented. Yeah, I, I... If you want to get a group that can look really clean cut, these would be the two to guys to get. Yeah, that's funny. I haven't but thought, yeah. I haven't thought about those guys in forever. The friggin' bravado brothers on this list in 2012, who were still wrestling for ROH at the time. Yeah. That's probably the last time I saw them was watching Ring of Honor on HDNet. Mm-hmm. Hearing uh, Mike Hogwood saying, slap the porpoise. That guy, he was terrible. Oh, my God. Yeah, most announcers on television lately are. Anyway, number 15 is currently in NXT as a talent swap with uh, Evolve. Oh, Gargano? Actually, no. The other one. Oh, Ciampa. Yeah. Nice. Well, really was only coming into his own at the time. Number 16, former tag team partner to Adam Cole. Uh, uh O'Reilly? Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. No. I, I was going to say, I'm like thinking, is it O'Reilly or is it going to be the other one? No, nope, it's O'Reilly. And, and ha- you know what? Number 17 is the other half of Red Dragon. That uh, Bobby Fish. Which I can actually agree with right now. Yeah. He brings that mustache with him. Yes, exactly. Well, and you know what? I like the fact that it actually says hard worker here. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because Kyle O'Reilly, I, you know what? Every single time I saw Kyle O'Reilly, and and it's, it's gonna sound funny, maybe, and I'm, I'm maybe he was trained by him, but I can't help but look at Kyle O'Reilly and see Roderick Strong. I that's just, why they were teamed up together for a while. I know. It's just funny. Like I can't help but look at Kyle O'Reilly, and I have to think about like, wait. I'm not, it's not Roderick Strong, and I have to think twice to remember his name is Kyle O'Reilly sometimes, because it's like, I just see him at quick glance you know, when he's wrestling, I'm and I'm like... Gonna, I'm never going to forget O'Reilly, because I came up at the time when, you know, Future Shock was yeah, the big with, and I was watching a lot of their matches, and their split up was a huge thing that we got to experience in New York, because I went to a show one time, I think it was uh, 2012. One of my last shows for our awake. And the main event was O'Reilly and Richards against Eddie Edwards and Adam Cole. Yeah, I was going to the the split between the Wolves, yeah, of their and protégés. The the wolves allowed them to take their own protégés. Mm-hmm. And the split between Future Shock, you know, facilitated that. Yeah. And the match actually ended with Adam Cole pitting Davey Richards in the main event. That's great. <laughs> The... So it was one of those holy shit moments. This is also a time when Daniel Bryan was kind of just started getting over as Daniel Bryan. So in between matches, there's nothing but yes chance going on. That's awesome. So we had a lot of fun doing that. But then again, my first ROH show with my friend Tomas was the night the Kings of Wrestling won the tag team title championship from uh, Aries and Strong. And uh, there was a lot of uh, Kings of Wrestling, shut the fuck up, dueling chance going on. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, a match is over, nothing's happening, Kings of Wrestling. <laughs> Kings of Wrestling, shut the fuck up! <laughs> I love it. And you know what, that's the scary part, is I, I would have loved to have seen them being reunited in the E on the main roster. If... I tried to hope that's still going to be a possibility, just Chris Hero's Chris Hero. Yeah, exactly. I now mean, that they're hiring guys and letting them keep their names. Well, 
and see that's the hard part because I I know it's it's Cesaro now and his thing. I mean even I don't know. I I would like to see it happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I I, I like I said I would love it to happen, and it's gonna be weird to not have the queen with her with her uh, her uh, soldiers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, her very, very, very disturbing eyebrows. Oh my God, like the painted on. I think we can't have Sarah Del Rey come up once in a while. Yeah. You know, I would love to see Del Rey wrestle in NXT a few times. Yeah, I don't think. Just that's because true. if we're gonna have someone wrestle the women, let's have it one of the best in the business. Yeah, yeah. Dude, what happened? You know, to, what since Sasha Banks ain't down there anymore? Yeah. Well, now what happened with uh with mischief? I haven't seen her in God knows how long or thought about her until just now. I couldn't tell you. I wasn't. In, I never really got to see much of this. I saw a few of her matches from my time working at a, a wrestling website. Um, but uh, another wrestling website not affiliated with us. Uh, but um, the uh, she was like she's like a biochemist or something by day. I read they did a thing on PBS of like people who have so weird. So apparently she's a pro wrestling Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, I don't know, dude. It was weird. It was like PBS did a special on uh online. It was like a online only like little mini documentary, and they did like different people who had weird nighttime jobs but were in the science fields or whatever during the day. And she was one of them. And like, I mean, they had another guy who was like a sword swallower, fire eater or something like that in, in a, like a sideshow. And then she was, she was a wrestler and they had a couple other ones. It's like, dude, it was kind of cool to see. But yeah, that was one name that, that was big in the mid two thousands. I mean, when Shimmer was freaking mm-hmm. ruling the, the day and, and, now, uh, let's talk about what WWE had at one point. They signed awesome cop. Yeah. They had karma there. Yep. Yeah. You know, they had Gail Kim at one point. Mm-hmm. They brought in Jazz from ECW for a while. I really miss Beth Phoenix, though. Yeah, she... Oh, dude. I mean... She was one of those few people that was able to look strong, and look big, still look hot, another, an- still kick someone's yeah, ass. Well, and another name, too, that the WWE had... Actually, two names that the WWE had got rid of, and they did better in TNA. Taryn Terrell... And Brooke Adams. True. They went from being afterthought. Well, and, you know, being to, part of the dollhouse. Yeah. Well, not, and not even just the dollhouse. Not yet. Do not even just the dollhouse. Her feud with Awesome Kong before that was amazing. Her match that the the uh, that Falls Count Anywhere Last Woman Standing match with Gail Kim that Taryn Terrell did. I wouldn't know those. That was at a time I wasn't watching. But TNA yeah, anymore. dude, yeah, there, there was, yeah, there was some damn good matches there between Gail Kim and Terrence Terrell. And then, and then Brooke Adams, uh, Brooke Tessmacher, I mean, she, for the love of God, dude, like she was brought in as part of Extreme Expose with Kelly Kelly and Layla uh, to be like backup dancers for the Miz during his promos. God damn, I miss Layla already. Yeah, dude. She's hot, <laughs> but yeah, dude. I mean, it's been it's been crazy how like WWE's kind of just they miss the ball on some guys, and then they go on. Well, you to know be... what? They would have never gotten over in the WWE. Let's be honest. Probably not. That's the sad Joe part. Joe Galloway was never going to go anywhere. Either. Yeah, I mean, and and that's the sad part. So okay. I th- I think anyone can make fun of like throw crap and tire. No, yeah. that ain't gonna work. I think honestly, I think that freaking WWE might be interested in getting him back. I same with EC3 I now. I'm surprised. It was like a legit six six guy. Yeah. I would rather them go at bring back a guy like uh, uh, Matt Morgan though. Yeah, yeah. What the hell's happened to that guy? Like he's falling off the face of the earth. Yeah. Like that's one guy. Like WWE brought him in during the the tough enough season. That that one. I can't remember which season it was. Like two or three. He was there. And he, I mean, he was a freaking truck, dude. He was not even in, in shape, and he was a big boy. He was a farm boy. So he was farm boy. He was farm boy strong and round. But then all of a sudden he, he does his thing on WWE. He has his stupid stuttering gimmick. And then he's off the face of the planet, and he shows up in TNA, and he's freaking yoked. Oh, so 
then she retired. Really? Uh, in January 2014, Morgan announced his retirement from professional wrestling full-time in order to be with his wife and newborn son, as well as begin a career as a regional manager for a big-time medical device company. In countless interviews since, Morgan has stated that he has a great love of professional wrestling and all the opportunities that afforded him, that his biggest dream in life was that his that his biggest dream in life was to be a father, and so he had to take a job that allowed him to be home every night with his son. Mm-hmm. Something he something he unfortunately would not be able to do as a full time wrestler. Yeah, that's for sure. He also stated that he had conversations with both WWE and TNA about possible returns uh, to either company, but that he could not turn down the offer for his new job due to it offering a salary that blew away the WWE or TNA would have offered him, and that he would find it very difficult to be away from his wife and son for extended periods of time. However, Morgan stated that he would not rule out making occasional, occasional independent circuit appearances. Alright, I can't fault the guy. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to be a dad. Like, see, that's why I'm kind of shocked that, like, Adam Rose is full-time on the road. Considering, like, what we saw in that documentary, the the E60 uh-huh. documentary of his kid having, uh, been, I mean, born with a disease that it needs extra special care. You would think, like, he would want to be closer and stuff like that. I trying to get as much money as he possibly can right now to make sure that he's got nest egg for that kid when he needs it. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, it's just funny how that works. I mean, different people operate different ways, and they do things for different reasons, but yeah, man, it's uh, it's kind of funny how that works, so. Yeah. Not gonna be ups- uh, well, I am going to be upset, but I'm not going to be angry about it. Yeah, that's true. Now, good on him, right? Yeah, exactly. It was nice to know that the E was interested at one point, though. Kind of makes you feel good, don't it? Yeah. I, I don't know, man. There's there's just uh, there's so many things out there. And you know what? It's funny because, I mean, bringing up the E60 thing and bringing up Breaking Ground, it humanizes these guys. And that's that's what I like. I mean, I really – I like seeing – um. I like seeing the the human side of these people and how, yeah, some of it I know is a put on. I mean, Breaking Ground especially, but the E sixty one was a little bit more. Hey, we're just gonna follow you around. Uh, uh-huh. But um, but like for me, if it wasn't for Breaking Ground, I wouldn't be a Dana Brooke fan right now. I, I mean, told you. yeah, I wouldn't be a Dana Brooke fan right now. If it wasn't for that E sixty thing, I still, I, I mean, I'm, I may not be an Adam Rose fan. But I'm pulling for the guy because of what I saw, his, I mean, commitment to his family and his child. Mm-hmm. So, I, I don't know, man. It, it's it's just funny how things go. But, yeah, WWE, I mean, I, I know that y- you can't go based off of emotions and keeping guys and not firing guys and things like that. And, again, I'm a coach, dude. I, I have to cut kids every year. And it sucks. It's the worst. Uh, it, it's it's one of the worst feelings in the world to have to basically say, "Hey, I have to crush your dreams right now of, of playing on this team." It's the same thing with WWE. I mean, they they have a lot of people that have dreams and goals of wanting to come out of that that backstage area through the curtain at WrestleMania and and be out there and have that cheer. I mean, some of these guys are lucky enough to get to the main stage, and so some aren't. But you can't help but see something like that and want to pull for the guy. You you want to, uh-huh. I mean, even even to a point where like to see, like, what Daniel Bryan did with Connor, uh, Connor Mahalik, the Connor the Crusher, the one kid that got the the Warrior Award. Uh-huh. That if I had never seen a Daniel Bryan match in my lifetime before that, and I just saw that video package of him and Connor wrestling in the ring, and then hearing the story about Connor. Daniel Bryan probably would have been my favorite wrestler of all time at that point, just without without even seeing a match of his. Just for a guy to do that in 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 an industry where most of the time you think people have the biggest egos on the planet, to see that is 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 amazing to me. So, 
Yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, there's some good things out there, and like you said, there's, there's, there's bad people. Um, like, what was the guy's name? Was essentially sacrificed his career to give his kidney to his cousin, Sonny Siyaki. Oh yeah! Wow. Remember that? Yeah, I do. You know, he pretty much had to end his career because he gave away a kidney. Yeah. There are just some real noble people out there. Yeah, it, it's just pretty good. And then, then there was also, too, another one, too. Um, there, there was a situation, too, uh, on the Indies, Allie Parker. I don't know if you heard about that one, too. She, I think she gave up a kidney for, for a family member. And she, lucky for her, she got healthy enough after the surgery where they they actually medically cured her and she's wrestling again. They didn't think she was going to be able to wrestle, but they they said she she they said she was she's cool, and I think she's she's doing more of not necessarily ma um big old events anymore. She's doing more of the um um what are those things called the uh custom matches. But yeah. Well, let's end this on at least one happy note. Yeah. Joey Ryan's engaged. Dude, that was so cool. You know the best part was, though? Hmm. He rolled her up at the end. <laughs> yeah, and then he gets up. Hey, I'm a professional. I had to finish the match. I need the larger cut of the winner's purse. Yeah. He's like, well, you did just buy the ring, so. Yeah. Yeah, it that's. Just, it was one of those really interesting things. Yeah, I mean, it, it was different. I mean, I, I didn't – when they showed the clip, I mean, I knew – dude, and he got major play, dude, on a lot of different major news outlets too. That was the fun part. Like it went – it not just viral on the internet. It went viral on a lot of the, the news websites that I go to to read political stuff. And I'm like, dude, like really? Like they're talking about Joey Ryan's proposal? What the hell? So – Oh. But yeah, man, good on him. Um <laughs> good on him for last week making his first appearance in uh Lucha Underground, even though he got that snot beat out of him. <laughs> hey, he put on a hell of a match against Cage. Yeah. I... Okay, he held his own for a much longer than anyone should against a guy that big. Yeah, no. But uh yeah, man. It's just there's as much as as much as we between this show and sometimes on the P-Dub show, as much as we crap on WWE sometimes, the best parts about wrestling sometimes are the things that not everybody gets to see. The stuff that you get to see maybe in your own neighborhood, in your own backyard, or on the shows that, like Ring of Honor or TNA or New Japan, that you happen to follow because you enjoy wrestling. And, and granted, NXT is a great product that WWE's put out there, um, and it's slowly, you can see it's, it's morphing its way up to the main roster. It just kind of sucks that sometimes they, I mean, they take a step forward, they take two steps back, but they, it's just, the business is here. It, I mean, it, and honestly, I think it, I mean, granted, I know all the stuff that they've been talking about, Hey, Shane McMahon and wanting to make sure that there's a fourth generation McMahon running the show and this, that, and the other thing. Um, I the business is here to stay. I don't think that the business is ever going to go away. There's too many wrestling fans out there. There's too many wrestlers out there. Yeah, exactly. More wrestling than going anywhere. Granted, we may not have as big a mainstream market as it used to have. Yeah. But there's still three damn companies out there on television and everything. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Plus, yeah. WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor has their shows. Um, depending on your market, you get New Japan. Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, PWG is shown, I think, in syndication. Someplace. I mean, there's there's a lot of, even local locally, if you have a Fed, chances are they probably have a local channel that shows them, which is great. So there's, I mean, again, like I said, as much as we crap on, on certain things with WWE, and we did, we started off the show saying, fuck WWE for all the stuff with, WrestleMania coming with Undertaker and Shane McMahon. In the end, 
will be there tomorrow watching SmackDown. Absolutely. We will be there watching Raw on Monday. If we could, we'd probably watch Superstars in the main event. Yeah, that's way too much. That's too much commitment when you have real life obligations. <laughs> Let's be honest, though. If we had an ability to do so, with, Hell yes. Um, like fast forward, we'd probably have to watch the match. Hell yes. Hell yes. Absolutely freaking lootly. So, um,. Again, let's uh, let's pull for uh, some of the the younger guys uh, to come up and make their uh, stand on the main roster here soon enough. So, and uh, I really think we're gonna see Enzo and Kaz after WrestleMania. I agree. I think we're so. gonna see Bailey after WrestleMania. They she actually just posted something on the Instagram just today about being at the uh, Stanford uh, HQ. I definitely think we'll see Apollo Crews before we see Finn Balor. Uh, yeah, I think so too. I also think Samoa Joe's going to be on his way up. So we shall see, man. I think they'll bring up Samoa Joe because they know him and Styles have had some amazing matches in the past. Let's take advantage of it. Plus, Samoa Joe versus everyone else. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we shall see how everything goes. But, I mean, again, it's it's a fun time to be a wrestling fan. It's a frustrating yeah, time for storytelling. It's a good time for matches. Yeah, yeah, and then it's just a matter of if WWE lets them happen. And again, follow if you want to see it on a regular basis. Go, go follow the the lesser promotions and your your local indies too. So, cool. Well, on that note, then uh, let's uh, we're gonna sign it off here for uh, Gorilla Blood Radio. Uh, Scott NDX out there in New York City. I'm Daniel Korea. And uh, we will be talking to you again next time around. Have a good night. Yeah, see you next week, you bastards. Yeah.